right, so my name is Rebecca. Most of you already know me. Um, and I'm the president of the Day, which stands for the National Association of Black Journalists. So today we have Adrian, who's also part of NABJ, the professional chapter in the cities. So we were able to get her out here to come and speak to us. So just, um, she's going to talk to us about her experience and how she got to CARE 11. And yeah, so if you guys have any questions, I guess they can chip ask as you go. Yeah, so just help me welcome Adrian. Hi everyone. I sh thank you for that sweet introduction, Rebecca. Whoa, don't fall. So, uh, da, 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 da. how many are in here today? We're gonna find out. Starting with you, you're one, two, one. Kind of go ahead, continue the trend, and I want you to split up into groups. The ones will be on the left side, the twos will be on the right side. Go for it. So. One. Two. One. Let's see how well you follow directions. You need to grab the hand of someone who's not standing next to you. Okay. All right. Now. Yep. Hold it. So. Okay. Now, now both hands. All right. Derek, I'm recruiting you. <laughs> All right, Derek is going to be watching. You cannot let go of the person's hand that you're holding. The goal is to un uh, untangle yourselves. You've got to get out of this knot, right? Don't start. You're cheating. You're cheating. You've got to get out of the, this human knot that you've made without letting go of the hand of the person the person's hand you're holding all right ready set go okay. Okay, let's pull out your phone. Sure, at me, yes. So see what you can find out. Like, use the next, the next two minutes to see what you can learn about me. Using your phone, see what you can learn about me. I promise, this all has to do with journalism. So, tell me what you've learned about me so far. Okay. Uh, okay. Raise your hands. <laughs> All right. I'm Saginaw, Michigan. Tell me your name. Brett Benson. Brett. Brett. Brett is right. I am from Saginaw, Michigan. I went to. Where did I go to college? Michigan State University. Yes, I went to Michigan State University, where I majored in. Journalism. Journalism. Great. Um, <laughs> What else did you find out about me? You have two brothers. No, she doesn't have any brothers. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. I, I misread that at the beginning, too. So, so she, okay. Remember this, guys. What, what did you think you learned about me? You have brothers. But it says, yeah, it clearly says. You said I have two brothers, and you said, no, I don't have any brothers. So what's the real answer? The brothers I never had. You don't have any brothers. Okay. In that picture. Right, right, right. Okay, so I am an only child. I don't have any brothers. But do you see what just happened there from social media? What, can someone tell me what just happened? I heard it over here. You missed, like they misinterpreted what something. Right, okay. And they both saw the same thing, but they thought something different. Okay, so as journalists, that's one lesson. When reporting, uh, if you're on what, we, well first, let's backtrack. How many folks in here are majoring in journalism and how many want to be like in PR? Journalism. journalism. So does everyone in here want to be like a producer, reporter, photographer, photojournalist? Is that who I'm talking to? Okay, great. Stand by guys, that video I just promised you is about to be uploaded on the Facebook page. Okay. 
And we're coming back to this point, I promise. The whole point of that is, as you're covering news, you really have to fill in the blank. Fact. Fact. Check. Okay. Brown. Uh, most of you figured out some information via my Facebook page. I am a multimedia journalist at CARE 11. So that means I write, I shoot, I edit, I do everything by myself. This is the gear I lug around every day. This is my camera. The tripod's not level right now. But it's not, I mean, it's heavy, but it could be heavier. Oh, you see it. Bam. All right, let's pause. Do you guys use cameras and tripods like that? Okay. All right, let's see. Can we hear? I saw it. Stewart Hall. They're hungry and excited about the future. They've invited CARE 11 multimedia journalist Adrian Bronis to share her tips and suggestions. But just like this human knot they form, they will soon learn. Their journey in journalism will be full of twists and turns. No wisdom here. All I can do is tell you about some stuff I've learned along the way. But I can tell you some things that you won't learn in the textbook. And I can tell you how this human knot you're working on plays a role in journalism. Let us start there. Okay. So Ryan, I'm sorry. Where's Ryan? Right Ryan was my volunteer earlier. I was just barely able to see myself. <laughs> you you were supposed to see yourself. Something went wrong. Oh. His bike got clipped, but I will share that with you later. So let's start with the human knot. What did we learn from that human knot? It's hard to untangle. Okay, it's hard to untangle. It takes teamwork and communication. Teamwork and communication. Tell me your name. Taylor. Taylor. Good job. What else did you learn? If you change your angle, you might see a solution to the problem. If you change your angle, solution to the problem. Very good. What's your name? What's your name? Spencer. Spencer, okay. Who else? Uh, you can experience unexpected problems. Unexpected problems, absolutely. Sometimes your movements make everything worse. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a good one back there. Uh, you have to be willing to try like many different things and then sometimes you know, it's kind of trial and error. A lot of times it doesn't work and you're going to start over and try something else. Exactly. You're all right. All of these answers are perfect. But how in the world does this play a role in the world of journalism? A lot of things go wrong. A lot of things. <laughs> story. That, that's absolutely correct. Some days are great. Other days, not so great. So journalism is a lot like the human knot. You have to work with others. It takes a lot of teamwork. You have to be flexible. Um, I'll just be honest. The hours suck. Starting out, the pay sucks. I've been in the business nearly 11 years. And some people might still tell you the pay sucks. You don't get to spend a lot of time with your friends and family. You guys still interested? You still want to do this? Well, great. If you said yes, that means you're passionate about journalism because you have to have passion to do this type of job. I mean, I love it. I don't want to do anything else. If I did something else, I would teach journalism. So we turned that story, that's like a minute, a little mini story. This is an app I use called Videolicious. You guys can download Videolicious on your Apple iPhone and soon Videolicious, if not, already will be available for Androids. So in working as an MMJ, I'm always running and gunning. This is a helpful tool in the field. If there's breaking news and I show up and I need to get some video back so my assignment editor can upload it on our website, or if I'm by myself and I don't have a live truck, do you guys know what a live truck is? If I don't have those capabilities, I can shoot video, can get a quick sound bite and send it back. You will see Ryan's bite later. Um, so, any questions? All right. What What are some questions that you may have? Because I don't want to tell you stuff that you already know. I want to show you some story examples, tell you a little bit about how I got here, and hopefully hear more from you. 
Okay. So, do you guys know what a day turn is? Yes. Okay. So let's see a show of hands for those of you who know what a day turn is. All right. Do you guys produce news packages here at school? Yes. How long do you have to work on those stories? One day. One day? So what do you do in a day? Come in, usually find a story and turn it around. I mean, I mean, I report on Monday, so I'm lucky you can have a weekend if something happens. But um, a lot of people don't have that luxury, so to say. So come in with a bunch of story ideas and see which one kind of has the best path for you to go out. So you are able to shoot it, edit it, write it, post it, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Where do you post it? Online, and then it goes on our newscast as well. Okay. All right. This is a day turn. Let's watch it and then we'll talk about it after. Is it too loud? Why is 60 feet through the air? And the rush of adrenaline. It's a fucking bronco out there just trying to hang on. Snow cross racing is checkered with highs. Trying to hang on to this 140 horsepower machine and hitting these big jumps. And lows. Mike Schultz has experienced both. The sport he loves changed his life. And ended up uh, getting thrown from my sled and landed on my left leg with all my weight and ended up shattering my knee joint. So it's quite a hit. Um, and the doctor is saying that, well, we got to take your leg off. But Mike didn't wave the white flag, and neither did any of his competitors conquering this course at Canterbury Park. They adapted. I'm racing the adapted class, which is a class for guys with uh, missing limbs and uh, paralysis at different levels as far as tired after sledding. Paul Thacker traded his wheelchair for his sled. The spinal cord injury changed the way he competes. It is nice to hop off that and go a little faster than, than what the wheelchair will make you. Make a little more noise. The fun, the speed, and spin around the track is there. We're a bunch of racers and we don't want to give it up, so we're loving it. He three brought his care of the news. Okay, uh, feedback. What did you guys think about this story? A lot of gnats. A lot of good gnats. A lot of gnats, okay. A lot of really good shots, too. Good shots, okay. Emotional shots. Emotional shots. What was emotional about it? When he was saying that he was passionate about his still even though he didn't have his leg. Okay. Um, there was a surprise in there. Surprise. Great, great, great. I liked your writing. Writing. Okay. So what was this story about? If you were going to, when I, you guys may have heard this before. If I'm out in the field, so I worked with someone on this. Uh, we, this was like a team shoot. I shot this with a photographer by the name of Jason Stucey. Stucey did all the heavy lifting that day. He had a GoPro and um, he had a GoPro on Schultz's head and then he had another GoPro like on the track. But if you were going to describe this story in three words, who did what? What's this story about? You can take time to think. Snowmobilers overcoming challenges. Oh, very good, very good. Overcoming challenge. Okay. Any other ideas? Paralegic snowboard. Snowboard, uh, snowmobile, uh, racing. Oh, snow, okay, so when, when you're thinking of who did what, you want to think of a noun, a verb, and an object in that order. A noun, a verb, and an object. And you kind of want the verb to be like strong. So say, say it one more time, real loud. Paralegic, snowmobiling, racing, snowmobile racing. Okay. Any other ideas? All right, so that's pretty much it. You, you know, who did what? You talked about there was a surprise in there. What was the surprise? Was I heard from you already. Let, let, let me hear from some different folks. That they were still going even though they suffered the injuries or whatnot. Yeah.
can you do that like regularly and he doesn't have he doesn't have a leg. So how did we find out he didn't have his leg? The shot. Say that again? The shot. So that was a reveal. And tell me your name? Leanne. Leanne talked about surprises. This is something I still struggle with sometimes. So I rewrote this story maybe twice that day. The first time, I think I wrote a line saying he lost his leg in a snowmobile accident snowmobile accident years ago. What's wrong with that sentence? No yeah, no surprise. I took it away. It's better to hear from your subject or the person that you're interviewing because they will be more powerful. And it seems all of you connected with them. Um, any questions? Anything else you want to know about that story? No. Okay. Do you want to see another story? I do have a question about that one. How long did it take you to edit that so that story aired in our 5 o'clock newscast. The race was at 12.30. No, the race was at 1.10. We got there at 12.30. So we did a interview with Mr. Schultz before he went out to race. I interviewed him and his wife and the other guy who is in the wheelchair who had the spinal cord injury. So they were done maybe around 2, 2.15. We got a little post interview and then we had to drive all the way back to our station in Golden Valley. So typically when I work by myself I don't have the luxury of riding in the vehicle or logging in the vehicle. So when I was out there in the field I had my focus. Snowmobiler overcomes challenge. That was actually my focus for that day and I think someone in here said it. So. I had my opening lines and I had my ending but I didn't have the middle part so when I got back to the station I wrote like what I like I like to break it up into chunks so I wrote the top half and then I gave it to Jason so he could start editing while he was editing I went back and finished writing the second half that way he gets as much time to edit as I get to write and I mean, we were happy with the story, but there was this shot, like I wrote to the white flag, but because we were running and gunning, he wasn't able to find that shot, and there was another shot that we had, like a lot of the GoPro footage just didn't make it because of the time. So deadlines are important. Do you guys know that? Have you heard this before? Am I boring you? Okay. I just don't want to be repetitive. Uh, okay. So, tell me your name again. Taylor. Taylor, I want to go back. Taylor said you come in on Mondays and you pitch story ideas. What's a story to you guys? How do you find stories? Striped shirt. What's your name back there? Uba. Um, Uba. How do you find stories? Uh, from the St. Cloud Times. I produce on Thursdays, so that's usually in the morning I'll come in, look at that, look at our email, and see if we got any um, press releases in the email. Um, so you look at newspapers and you look for news releases. Yep. Okay. Who else in here is responsible for finding stories? Who have, Ryan, how do you find stories? Well, same thing. I also produce. And uh, usually we check the AP wires um, first. Okay. Um, and then, but yeah, look at other news outlets, St. Cloud Times, um, and then recall and confirm information that. And then, yeah. Okay. How do you find stories? Um, sometimes, like, I'll walk through Atwood on my way to the station because there's always posters up of activities or events that are going around on campus. Okay, so you look for posters for information and in not your traditional outlet. Okay. Tell me your name. Alex. Alex, okay. There are times where like, I'll see a couple of my friends saying like, hey, this is going on on campus, or I'll hear it from just word of mouth, and it will be something like, oh, that sounds kind of interesting, you know, take the camera, you go cover it. Okay. We'll stop there. We'll revisit that. All right. This is also a day turn. In San Obama Elementary School. 
to have that discussion. You'll find a St. Paul educator who wears a shirt with the words, Black Tech Guy. Mondo Davison wears a shirt like this every day. One of our number one missions is to influence a generation of black boys to dream for an actor, rapper, or athlete. Um, and the black tech guy is just something that hopefully black boys will look up to later on and say, man, I want to be like the black tech guy. Davison says students have a better shot if they pursue a career in technology. I actually wanted to be an athlete myself. Nobody can tell me otherwise back in the day that I was going to play professional sports somewhere, somehow, and unfortunately I didn't make it. But the 30-year-old rebounded, and recently... So what is My Bar Jar? Davison created a tech startup called My Bar Jar. It's a crowdfunding platform that funds your fun. Any celebration, birthday, bachelor, bachelorette, promotion, anniversary, anything. My plan is to do something so amazing in technology that um, young black boys and black girls consider tech as their plan A. His fourth and fifth grade students are already big dreamers. I want to be a lawyer because then I can help people. He wants to help others thanks to a teacher who helps him dream smarter. It's probably the best teacher. Adrian Broadus, Care 11 News. Okay, so what did you guys like, dislike about this story? Well, let's start with our focus. What is this story about? That's what you want to do first when you're in the field. Find a focus. So what's the focus of this story? Um, Who did what? Teachers trying to empower younger students of color to go into tech. Okay. Any other takers? Um, teacher empowering younger generation. Okay. No. Um, teacher breaking barriers. Okay. Teacher encourages students to dream big. Okay. These are all good. Any other ones? Jeez, you guys should just come shadow me for a day and I'll have you find the focus for me. But how do you think we found out about this story? Have you guys seen or heard of this guy before, the black tech guy? Okay, how do you think we found out? Must have been word of mouth. Word of mouth, okay. A lot of times it's just knowing people who know people, just talking. Okay, talking. I mean, a lot of times you just like see or hear something, like maybe, I don't know, and then you're just kind of think, oh, that would kind of make an interesting story. And then people might be interested by that, and yeah. like somebody in the community is going to find that interesting. So like, oh, Hold on, two more. Did you guys find this story interesting? Yes. Okay. Uh, sometimes we'll get stuff like sent to us on like Facebook or Twitter. People saying like, "Oh, if I saw this. It would be a good story." So. Yeah. I use Facebook and Twitter a lot to search for story ideas. I was going to say like possibly someone stumbled across it on like YouTube or something, finding it, find the video that. Okay, well, I found this story idea at an event called Network After Work. Remember when I talked to you about sucky hours and not having a lot of time to spend with your family? Well, I had an option that night. Watch Scandal and enjoy a glass of wine with my friends or go to this networking event. I knew there were going to be hundreds of people there, so I paid 12 bucks. I went to this networking event. I said I wanted to spend an hour there. I worked the room, I pet handed out all of my business cards, and I approached people and said, hey, I'm Adrian Broadus from Care 11 News. I'm always looking for a story. Do you know someone who's doing something extraordinary in your community? Is there something you feel needs to be investigated or just something you want showcased on the news? And people typically open up. And this guy, his name is Mondo Davison, I think that's his name. He told me, he pitched himself. And so I pitched that story in my newsroom and they sent me out uh, to do it. So that's what you call like an enterprise piece. It's something no one else is going to have. No offense, I don't want the story that's in the newspaper. I don't want a story that's emailed to me and other reporters in the market from someone who works in public relations. I want my stories to stand out. I want to be the first person to do them. And I don't know, I get pride or take joy in the fact when other 
news outlets follow me the next day. So this guy said he had like two other, someone from the paper reached out to him and another reporter from a different station. And you guys should do that. I mean, invest in yourself. Yes, I spent $12, but maybe instead of hanging out with friends on Friday night, find somewhere where you can go and mine for story ideas. I'm curious. I like to be the first person to know what's going on. And I ear hustle too. I'm not nosy, but I ear hustle. Okay, any questions? All right, do you want to see more stories? Do you guys have stories you want to show? Okay. Um, okay. All right. So, I'm thinking here. Um, okay, I'll show you guys this story. This is a story that aired a week ago today. You ready? Bam. When words offer little comfort, music speaks to Greg McFarlane. Go good, go, go on to the normal, really, you know. That's the decades of touring with his brothers in a rock reggae band. Ipso facto. Greg, the lead drummer, is facing his toughest challenge yet. I could really move, but I didn't know it was from from city If I get to the two more years, man, it'll just be I couldn't ask for any more than that. I really couldn't. I, I that would be enough. Doctors blame high blood pressure for Greg's kidney failure. Without a new kidney. I would die. For sure. Not like me. Needles poke and pierce Greg's bone. Three days a week, four hours a day, like a washing machine. The third day I did this, I woke it up after some stuff. It's a dialysis machine. Does what his kidneys can't. It became the riddle. To his family's beliefs. I just want to take a deep breath and breathe in. Eight years ago, Greg's brother Wade, the lead singer of the band, was also experiencing kidney failure. They thought his son would end, but as the story goes, saving lives was in his family's blood. She gave me the kidney. His niece, Yanni. Call me up, and you can get the papers. Black Americans are three times more likely to experience kidney failure, something Greg and his brother Wayne had in common. But like a link on a chain, they're closely bonded together, full of faith. We thank Jesus for this gift that's going to be given to them and God. On Greg's birthday, Yai's sister Angela delivered a gift that changed Greg's life. That's perfect. You know, if you ever need another present. Work every year. Greg now has more years to take selfies with his entire family. Most he wanted to give or could, his niece Angela was the match. He's my uncle, I love him. He's a need, and God chose me. Giving is the heart of the McFarland family. This kind of demonstration of love goes beyond words. I can't find anything. The show or describe my gratitude. When words aren't necessary, one thing you got for music. It's a perfect improv. Adrian Ross, care about the news. Yes, you do it for me. Yes, me too. Okay. So, what in this story worked? What didn't work? What'd you guys? Go ahead. At the beginning, I totally thought it was going to be about a local, not local, but yeah, local for that area, rock band, you know, um, a home rock band, and then you went that route. So it was, it was good. The reveal, the secret. Lots of reveals in this one. Okay. Anyone else? I love how the story started the way it finished, which was at the house, and you could hear the music playing. I really liked how that tied together. Okay. Oh, I like the part where. Um, you're like the dialysis machine thing. You kind of said like something about how that's like the 
algorithm that is like been listening to now. And instead of saying to like, I mean, later we found out you, somebody said that he had kidney failure, but um, it kind of just you let it show it, like you let him say it, and you let the machine come in instead of just being like, be sick. Or right, right. So that was like um, another layer of it, and I tried to write to the video. We didn't have a lot of video, but this dialysis machine goes in a circle and it reminds me of a washing machine. So that's how I came up with that line, but I let the net sound kind of help carry the story. Someone said something earlier about, well, let's, let's rewind. How is this different from like the other two stories? Was the pacing different? Did you notice a change in tone or? I noticed that it actually was very well paced because it's actually, I think, it's like twice as long as each of the other stories, but it didn't feel like it. it felt like it was still concise to the point. Okay. It felt like, I'm assuming it was a feature story, but, or something like that. Yeah, it was a feature, yeah. yeah. Um, but it was, it just felt like you're watching more of like a movie or a video rather than a okay. series, but, and it tied together with the music and the nap sound really nicely, so. This one had more locations in it because here you went to the house and you went to the hospital, where the other ones they were you were in the school or you were at the track, and so it had more locations, which gave it more depth because you went from the house to the hospital to a visiting room and then back to the house. Right. Made full circle. Right? Okay. Yeah, we three different locations. I'm thinking, and if you notice. Like when we interviewed everyone at the house, we did multiple interviews at the house. Like we didn't have them stand right here in the same spot because what happens when you have your interview subject right here? It gets boring. repetitive, boring. So, and we use a wireless mic for everyone. You guys know what a wireless mic is? It's this thing I've got down here. So that way they can roam free, so to speak, and when you have the wireless microphone on someone, you hear everything that's going on. They often forget that the mic is on and you can get some of those intimate moments. And we even mic'd, did, who talked about the dialysis machine? We put a microphone up to that so you could hear the audio so it's clean, clear, and crisp. If you're out shooting, sometimes, I'll be honest, it's a struggle if it's cold and snowing, but if a flag is blowing, and I can get close enough to the flag, I'm going to put my microphone on the flag so I can get that clean audio. And that's kind of what you saw there. Anything else on this piece? This one was hard for me, I'll be honest, because there were so many reveals. You had the two sisters, both gave a kidney to their uncle. The two brothers, both ended up with kidney disease or failure. And there were, there were so many stories within that story some that didn't make the cut but that's and that's another thing you have to remember you may have wonderful sound bites but you can't use all of them uh any questions tell me your name bailey bailey go for it um, do you find that most people are willing to do interviews like that with you or is, is there is it been a struggle to get people to talk you know for a story like this, I have had luck, not always. Uh, so I'll show you a story where they were, they were, okay, the next story that I'm gonna show you, the guy who's like the central character in the story didn't want anything to do with media. He hung up on me three times. He later told me he hates reporters, but now he's like one of my BFFs. So, I think people can sense if you're genuine. I don't like to pester people. I am persistent. There's a fine line. And, you know, I treat people and tell folks what I would want to hear. Uh, so for this story, the last story you saw, that, that was from word of mouth. That's how I found out about them. This next story, I'm going to show you. This story kind of fell in my lap because 
I kept up, or uh, I kept in touch with someone that I did just a day turn on, which turned into something much bigger. Uh, I just want to pause here. This is my website. How many of you guys have your own website? Okay, if you don't have one, invest in yourself. Purchase your domain name. You can upload your resume reel. Do you guys know what a resume reel is? Do you know how to make them? Great. You guys have all had internships? Let's see a show of hands on internships. I'm losing my focus here. I'm going all over, but this is important. Okay, who hasn't had an internship? Raise your hand. Are you a senior if you have not had an internship? Junior? Yeah. Okay. Juniors, okay. It's important to have internships. I had like four or five before I landed my first job. I told you the hours suck, but you have to invest in yourself. All right. But this is really a fun fun gig. I love it. Um, Did you always know that you wanted to be a reporter? So, back in the day I wanted to be a professional singer, but I'm only good at karaoke. I don't have the greatest <laughs> singing voice. And I love to write. Uh, when I was younger my dad would make me write. I had to write essays. Uh, it was his way of A, forcing me to be quiet, and B, he wanted to develop my writing skills. So I knew early on, I knew for sure my freshman year of high school, and I started out in print. So I worked at my high school paper, my college paper, the State News, and I interned with the Grand Rapids Press, and had my first on-air job when I was a junior in college again. Stand by. Okay, here we go. I'm sorry, it's blurry. Oh boy, come on. Okay, you see your arms above her. You know what? We all wait for someone or something. Sometimes it's rather quick, sometimes it's uh, not quite so quick. So. Tom Meeks is waiting I suppose. for an update on the condition of his new heart. And I think I feel it. Casey Heisler waits to hear the rhythm of that heart again. It was a Sunday. The phone call came at 4 a.m. Do you have the right guy? Like, are you sure it's Matt? Her brother Matt was a student at the University of North Dakota. In March, a house fire ended his life. Matt was 21. He was very tender from a little boy. He was always just dead. He was tired. Good to see you. And Tom, he now lives with that same heart. You look awesome. I'm telling you, I feel awful. Awesome. You get your license, you check that box. Anything it's just a small thing. At 16, Matt signed up to be an organ donor. There was no alternative for me except a transplant. Because of Tom's age and other health concerns, five different hospitals refused to consider him for a heart transplant. But the Mayo Clinic gave Tom a lifeline, putting him on a waiting list for a new one. Nine, ten, nine. That's Tom. Two days after he received that lifeline, Thanks to me. Oh, Matt. What are you talking about? The heart that I grew up with and like fell in all of my hugs when I hugged him, but it's still out there somewhere. Today is finally here. Long away, by the way. Long away. Pretty excited about this. Obviously, in my case, you're always going to carry a very, very warm spot in my heart. Eight months after Matt died, Matthew's dad, Jerry, his mom, Cheryl, and younger sister, Casey, embraced the heart they love. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> the waiting. 
think about this story I want to hear from someone else sorry um, I like how at the beginning you had the man in the hospital and then you showed a family my first thought was that they were related they might have been like the granddaughter but then you um, continued to say that they were actually not related at all until this event happened. anybody else how did this story make you feel? What's your name? I haven't heard from you all night. Jack. Hi, Jack. Uh, the raw emotion, just everything. Did you tell them to put the scope against the old heart to hear it? Did you tell them that it was like, like, it was like the strongest part of the story? I did not tell them to do that. So this is what happened. We were at the Gift of Life house. That's where that moment happened. Um, and I like to refer to them as moments. So, I like to stay out of the way. You probably noticed, do you see me in any of these packages? Stay out of the way, the story is not about you. If I'm working with a photographer, I stay behind the photographer. So, Jonathan Malott, he's an awesome photojournalist, was shooting, you know, set up shots with Tom and his wife Ann in another room. And I was in another room talking to a member of, on staff, and I just said, do you guys have a stethoscope so they could hear um, Matt's heart? And they didn't have one, so a member of the staff actually went next door to the Mayo Clinic, the hospital, grabbed that stethoscope, and that kind of just happened organically. That was Ginger, who runs the Gift of Life house, and she said, do you want to hear Matt again? So that, that's how that moment came about. Uh, anyone else on how it made you feel? Take one of these and pass them around. We've got about 10 more minutes. So a few of you said emotions. So you felt something, right? Did you feel happy? Did you feel sad? Mad? Whatever you're... Okay, go ahead. Um, it's kind of complex for me because my sister has something similar. She has a heart defect, so like it really hit home seeing something like that. Mm -hmm. 
So it was personal for you. You could relate. You could feel their pain. And that's what you're, you guys should be doing with your storytelling. Anybody can report. You can take information from a news release and track your package. But you want to dig deeper and really tell meaningful stories. And that's a part of who you talk to and like who you interview. I think the Heislers are fantastic. Someone asked, what was your name? Bailey. Bailey asked, is it hard to get people to share those types of stories? Sometimes, yes, but if you build relationships with folks, you may not get the family the day of the accident. It may mean you have to wait a few extra days. And for the Heislers, they wanted to get what message out? What did you guys learn that they want, what message did they want to get out? Donation. Organ donation, right. Any other questions? And have you guys heard in the past that you want to find great characters, memorable people to help tell your story? Like, officials are great. You can use them for information. We did interview folks with Life Source, but would they have added anything to this story? Would that have been more powerful than the family actually impacted? So, these are just some notes and reinforcement of what we've talked about. Uh, take one and pass that back. Um, Al Tompkins has a great book that I've read several times. Have you guys read his book? Uh, I don't want to misquote the title because I always get it wrong. Shoot for the heart, aim for the ear. That's a book I recommend you get from your local library or you can purchase a copy. There's some tips on backpack journalism or solo journalism. Another book that I have read is called Make It Memorable by Bob Dotson. I think uh, Dotson does a great job of telling memorable stories and finding strong characters. Um, one other thing I like to do, which is still a struggle, I try to keep my sentences nine words or less. Sometimes I'll cheat 13 words, but keep it simple, short, and clear. Uh, one of my mentors, Byron Pitts, told me a long time ago, less is more. And he always uses the example of, I love you. How many words is that? Three. So less is more. Um, any other questions? Yes? You can't find stories like this every single day. Sometimes, especially if you have to do a day turn and come in and it's just the basic use of the day. How do you make something, how do you dig deeper for a story that is pretty boring? What are you supposed to do? So, okay, that's a great question. And this is, uh, I, I like to say I'm in a rut now. So we, like tomorrow I'll go in. I don't know what I'm going to pitch tomorrow, but for it. I reach out to people, like I follow up with people, you know, you don't bug them every day, but for example, so I just checked them again with the Heislers, they'll have some more news to share um, down the road. Um, I did a s couple follow up stories with them, so here's another layer to that story. Um, Matt was only able, that's their son who died, he was only able to donate his organs because his roommate, Ryan Nelson, pulled him out of their burning house just in the nick of time where his organs could be saved. So Matt's friend Ryan, they've been friends since they were little. Ryan recently won an award from, I think it was the Carnegie Foundation. Don't quote me, I know you're rolling on that. He won this great or this prestigious award. So we did a follow with him and that really was like the first time we heard from Ryan. Um, and I'll just go back. So I was working night side and my first two stories fell through. My producer said, hey, that kid who died in the house fire, they're having some sort of ceremony at the hospital for him tonight. Go package it. So I worked with a guy by the name of Craig that night, and I remember we were saying, okay, what if no one is here? 
this might not be a story, it's already 7 o'clock and we've got to have everything done by 10. So we show up and there were all these people uh, coming out for what they call a flag raising ceremony. And I was thinking, okay, this is a story. If there are this many people here for a 21-year-old, this guy, Matt, must have been somebody really special. So at the end, and okay, so the PR folks, you guys will deal with this from time to time. They told us, you can't talk to the family. We don't want you talking to anyone. Just stay behind this line and you can shoot video. That's challenging. So I always try to find a way to respectfully go around PR folks because sometimes PR folks can kill your story. Um, so at the end of the ceremony, Matt's dad, Mr. Heisler, said, I sure would love to meet the person that receives Matt's heart one day. And that just like went off in my head. Oh, what if they meet the recipients? That's a follow-up story. So when you're on those stories that may seem like, that, that don't seem like much, try to develop a relationship if you can on the scene or wait a week and follow back up with the families. So I followed up with the Heisler family through Facebook. And I reached out to the sister, Casey, and that's how I got in touch with the mom. I don't know if that answered your question. And another thing on the weekends, a lot of times there are like festivals. Go to those festivals, uh, pass out your card or just tell folks, hey, I'm a student at St. Cloud and I work with our student newscast. What's going on in your world? I would love to do a story on you. It can be a feature, it can be a hard news story. I'm horrible at math, it's almost eight o'clock, I know we gotta go, but there are so many stories in data. So census.gov, the labor, no, Bureau of Labor Statistics, and if you guys take down my email, I can send you a long list of some websites that I like to search for ideas. Anywhere that you can find data, there's a story. Um, so yeah, does that answer your question? I'm also in grad school, guys. So I'm a student at Ball State University. So that's where the rest of my time goes. Um, thank you. Oh, wait. Any other questions? I don't... Back there. Go back. Um, yeah, um, just a little bit of background on how you got to the um, position at Carol. Okay, so we'll go back to that. So you guys were on my Facebook page. I started out working in Lansing, Michigan. Back then it was Market 110. I interned at my college paper, The State News, which is still one of the best newspapers in the country, in my opinion. And then I interned at the Grand Rapids Press. I also interned in my hometown, Saginaw, Michigan, which covers the Flint market. So my uncles, my family, they all live in Flint. I'm sure you know what's going on with the water. I was reporting on the water way back in the day. And now, what, 11 years later, 10 years later, it's finally all surfaced. So I spent three and a half years in Flint, Michigan, Saginaw, Michigan at WNEM, the CBS affiliate. After that, I went to the former CBS affiliate, which is Wish TV, and I was a reporter anchor there. I was a reporter anchor in Flint also. I didn't start shooting solo until I came to CARE 11, which some might say is backwards because typically they taught me when I was in school, the higher up you go, like the larger the market size, you won't have to lug around a camera. I was fortunate enough that um, I kind of skipped that in my early years, but I mean, working as a solo journalist has advantages and disadvantages. Just know that if you find yourself in that situation, sometimes you will have a victorious day, other times the bear might eat you, and don't let it get you down. And. Now I'm here. I started working here in 2014. So I've been here two years and a few months. So how did you like start networking? Like you started in Michigan and then you ended up over here. Like was it just like you like pursuing people or like were you 
opportunities to your internships? Or? So NABJ is hosting this uh, event for us today, right? Is that right? So I'm a member of the National Association of Black Journalists, and that's something else I did. They have what's called a student project. So I worked on this print project, and I worked on the TV project. I started going to NABJ in 2003. So I've been building relationships with folks since 2003 and this job at CARE came from a relationship at NABJ, if that makes sense. For example, someone I met at NABJ offered me a job at their station. I was not interested and said, hey, I'm really happy in Indianapolis, but thanks for thinking of me. Well, can I pass your information along to my friends over at CARE 11 News? That was in August 2013, and CARE called me in November that same year. So you never know. You may meet a news director who's at a station you want to work at, uh, don't, or who's not at a station you work at, don't think that relationship's not important because you don't know where that news director or that producer or that reporter will go for their next job. So do you still try to make it to the NABJ's conferences every year? I go to NABJ every year. I've never missed a conference. I've been going since 2003. This year it's in Washington. If you guys haven't registered and you're interested in going, you really should look into it. And ABJ has a program tomorrow night, too. You might, if you have free time, it's in St. Paul, but there could be some story ideas there. Just an idea. <laughs> Any other questions? None? Okay. You guys have that envelope? What is in that envelope? Okay, the pencils are important. I know we all have smartphones, right? But if you are reporting in a place like Minnesota, it's cold outside, these phones die quickly. Don't depend on your smartphone to take notes. Don't depend on your ink pen to take notes. If it rains, the pen won't work. A pencil will never let you down as long as it's sharpened. So hang on to those pencils. If you're out reporting, you need to get that number for this exclusive interview, you'll have that. What else is in that envelope? Teabag. What does a tea bag have to do with journalism? Everything. Your voice. Caffeine. Caffeine, yeah, lots of it. Well, one of my favorite quotes is from Eleanor Roosevelt. It's catered to women, but I like to expand it a little bit. And she says, women, but I like to say journalists, are like tea bags. You never know how strong you are until you're placed in hot water. There are days when I want to cry because I have no idea how I am going to nail a live shot at five, get interviews, write it, and edit it. Somehow, some way, I am a Christian. I thank God for his help and his strength. I get it done. We get it done. So if you find yourself in that position, don't give up. Keep going, keep that passion. If you didn't get that internship because you messed up on the cover letter, find another way, go back, apologize, and try to get that internship again. But don't let, don't let the challenges stop you from doing what you love. And don't let other people's perception of you influence you. Don't, don't, don't let them get in your head. Don't let them take up that space. Because if I had to listen to people years ago, I'd never be here at CARE 11 News. I thank you for your time and I hope to see all of you in the future. If you have story ideas, hit me up, okay? <laughs> all right. Good night.